So what's in the bag? This is what's in the bag. As I start to roll this out. Okay, here we go. This is what was in the bag. And let's turn it on and see how this thing goes. And there you go. It's my inflatable tent a paint booth. I figured I'd upgrade a little bit. I want to do some actual painting. This one has on the top, you can see it's got four stair coming in, a door in the back. Over here on both sides, it's got a couple of filters and vents to get rid of the overspray. And it's pretty bright in here, nice size. So I figured I'd give this a try, see how well it works out, and <clears throat> do some priming, and then ultimately try out some painting. We'll uh, keep you along here and see how it goes. Cheers. So the other thing that I'll share is up until now, I've been using the spray guns from uh, Harbor Freight. They were pretty inexpensive. But given that I want to do some interior painting, finish painting, I went out and bought uh, this Finish Line DeVilbis uh, spray gun. Also did a lot of research, a lot of research on how to use this properly. You'll see, got the pressure gauge right at the nozzle. For doing the priming, you really want to have that at about 22 PSI. One thing you want to keep in mind is when you're getting that 22 PSI, you want that 22 PSI with the trigger pulled. Um, if you just get the 22 PSI when the trigger's not pulled, or not pulled then uh, when you pull it, it's gonna drop and you're not gonna get a good spray. The other thing is with these guns, and of course I've gotta learn, but there's actually two, se two separate pulls to the trigger. One, when you pull it, it starts letting air come through. And then when you get to the second indent, it actually lets the, uh, the liquid flow, so the paint. When you're painting, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you keep it always pulled to let the air flow. And then when you want paint, just pull it that little bit extra in. I think it'll take a little bit of practice, but I'll try it out. <clears throat> the reason for that is because the air is always blowing, you don't get that sudden rush and you won't get that, uh, that spot buildup, which again, for priming, wasn't really anything I was concerned about. It was more, you know, trying to protect it. Now I'm looking for a more of a nice finish. The other thing is for the priming, 22 PSI, um, the head on this, the way you work this is uh, you do one coat in one direction, turn it, you turn this head here to the other direction, do another overlay coat. And for priming, you wanna have the tap, top button, which is the fan all the way open, because you wanna have good fan. And then you wanna have uh, this set so that it's, uh, I think on mine, and I'll get you the exact numbers, but I think I put it at one and a quarter turn, uh, one and a half turn, so that you get nice, even paint. And uh, one of the things you can do with it, and I've already done it to calibrate it, is put some water in here, put some water in your spray gun, hook it up, get used to the trigger, <clears throat> see that the spray is coming out in a nice, even pattern, and, uh, and go from there. Um, that's about it for now. I'll, I'll show you a little more as I get into the painting of it um, or the priming of it if I get to it. Uh, hopefully I'll get it this weekend. But uh, like I said, this you really need to have. You want to keep that trigger pulled in so air is always flowing and then just that second notch for when you want the primer or paint to go on. And uh, I will say that Stuart System has some really good videos out there for how to do it. 
What's nice about the Stewart systems is it's all water-based, which means cleanup is a breeze. Um, what I'm not sure of is their Eco Prime, also water-based. I wonder how well that'll hold up compared to the epoxy-based, but uh, we'll try it and we'll see. Back to doing some priming. And actually this I'm trying out uh, Stewart Systems Eco Sketch, or Etch, sorry. That is what I'm using to clean the metal. And then I'm gonna use their Eco Prime. And uh, you know, up until now, really I've been focusing on just getting it primed, just to say I've got it primed. But now I wanna test out and see how well um, the prime is gonna work because I plan on doing some painting. And so I got Stuart Systems paint as well. So you'll see I've got a few things here. I've got metal pieces. These have all been cleaned now. Also, you'll notice I hang them. Um, I want to make sure they're good and dry. That's something I didn't do. You can see here um, in this picture, this is one I primed. And generally the priming came out pretty good with the uh, epoxy base prime. But occasionally I didn't let the pieces dry and you see spots. So I want to get them good and dry. I've got a blend of pieces that haven't been primed, pieces that have been primed, pieces that were, I think, dipped from the factory. And I'm really just trying to see when I prime them, how well this prime works versus the other prime. The one thing I will say is when I did the eco etch on this stuff, uh, I was surprised at how much orange I don't know what it is but residue of some kind came off the stuff that I had already primed so even if you've got it primed and you're going to paint it uh, that's something you want to take into consideration as you go through that hey everybody here we go I did the painting or priming actually I guess you know one thing that didn't go well uh, overall the thing worked well this thing was so light it just flipped up and landed on another piece and of course, that'll mess up that piece, ultimately, but there you can kind of see how it all worked out. I think it came out pretty good. Obviously, I'll see once it uh, dries a little more, but it gives you an idea of kind of how it worked out. Anyway, there's a quick update. And I'll also see how well this adheres to the primer that was already on there. I'm curious to see if it's as tough. Anyway. Bye now.